Hi everyone, this is Neil Reiterter, also known as the Wax Whisperer. Thank you for joining me in my latest video. We have here a patient who attended with bilateral fully occluding earwax and dead keratin. We're commencing with this, their left ear first, and they had used some olive oil um, ear spray prior to attending. Um, and as you can see, it's softened the surface of this wax and keratin plug. In their right ear, they didn't use any um, softening agents and you will notice the difference in consistency when we come to the right ear that's a lot drier and firmer and I had to use an ear hook in the end to um, extract the, the large plug of wax and keratin. I'm just trying to squeeze this through the entrance of the ear so they have got a bit of a narrowing here and the wax plug is actually larger than this section of the ear canal so just teasing it through. Now in this video you're going to um, see a zoom function that I've been working on which allows us to um, well, zoom in a bit closer to what we're removing. Um, it's primarily designed for my other invention, the wax scope. Now, if anyone um, doesn't know what the wax scope is, it's a um, slightly different device to this device that I developed, the iClearscope, which is an endoscope. So with an endoscope, um, we don't use a speculum. Now, a specular is a hollow um, tapered uh, funnel shaped object which if you've had your ears examined at the doctor's surgery they attach that on the end of the ear torch and it goes into the ear and it's designed to help to stretch straight and widen the ear canal and allow the light to channel through into the ear so it illuminates the inside. Um, so with an endoscope you don't use a speculum and you can just see there, I was just trying out the zoom there just, just to view that wax. I didn't particularly need it for this part but um, so with the wax scope, it actually incorporates a speculum and the reason why we developed the wax scope, it's a bit more user friendly than the endoscope. We've been training people to use the endoscope since 2015 and um, some people find it really, really difficult to use uh, because you're having to not only remove the wax but also stretch and straighten the ear canal using the endoscope. So it requires a lot of what we call bilateral integration, coordination between your right, your left hand. Um, so the, the wax scope simplifies matters in that respect, but the view of this wax scope, you can't compare it to an endoscope, and that's because with an endoscope, it's like you're inside the ears. The field of view is panoramic. Um, so with an endoscope, at the same time, the, the zoom function isn't always, necess always necessary because the, the lens of the endoscope, hence the name endoscope, the magnifying optics is inside the ear already, so everything's already magnified. And if you want things to be further magnified, all you have to do is insert the endoscope a bit further into the ear towards the object that you want magnified. But with the wax scope, it's like an operating uh, surgical microscope. The, the optical lenses are outside of the ear, they're not inside of the ear. So with an operating ear into microscope, you have got a zoom function. Um, it comes in different um, formats, but you can magnify deeper into the ear. And that's because, as I mentioned, the optical lenses are outside of the ear. So with the wax scope, it's similar to an operating microscope. The lens is outside the ear and it's got a speculum. So um, if you want to see how the, the zoom function works with the wax scope, please do visit my other YouTube channel. Just type in clear wax. I'll put the link um, in the description and you'll see it with the wax scope, the difference is more noticeable um, with the zoom. But I've just zoomed in here because we're removing some debris, dead skin off the canal wall. I want to... I thought this is a good opportunity to try the zoom so I can really get up close and personal with the dead skin. So it gives me more precision. Um, I'm more able to avoid touching the canal wall. And you can see just to the right there, the patient has got a bit of a bony protrusion and there's a bit of dried skin there. So we just want to make sure there's nothing sinister behind that dry skin. So in a moment, I'm going to just gently vacuum over the bony part of the ear canal and we have got to be very careful when we're operating and um, working around the bony part of the ear because it is very sensitive. So again, I'm just zooming in to the side of the ear canal walls. I just want to hover over this dead skin. And I'm just kissing the surface. We've got to be careful that we don't poke and prod because that will hurt the, um, the patient. So just some skin just at the entrance. going to peel that away. just on the back part of the ear canal. This is uh, the part of the ear that if you make too much contact, the patient can elicit the gag reflex. We've got the branch of the uh, vagus nerve called the Arnold's nerve. And 
um, it's kind of the back posterior portion of the ear canal that you can stimulate that if you make contact. So as audiologists, we take impressions of the ears for various um, uh, products, so for um, ear defenders, sleep, swim plugs, and that involves us inserting uh, what we call an otoblock. An otoblock is either a cotton wool or foam block. We position inside the ear canal to prevent the, um, the material that we inject into the ear to take the, the shape of the ear. Um, from going too deep um, and when we put that outer block in it can compress against the side of the ear canal um, and elicit the gag reflex so again you can see just how careful we are just to the right that's that bony protrusion I'm just trying to hover over this some of this dead skin isn't coming away really it's quite sticky but it's not going to cause the patient any problems Just going back into this is the region that I just want to make sure there's nothing sinister going behind this. Well, it's a bit higher up. You'll see it in a moment. So again, just hovering over. Got to be. You can see the the bony part of the ear canal being revealed there. So we just got to kiss the surface here. And if you do make contact with the bony part and it's um, quite aggressive, the patient will flinch. And if the patient flinches. We're inside the ear with two two sharp potentially dangerous objects the endoscope and the sucker so you gotta be careful so that was the reason i just i was just to make sure there's no discharge there in that region then it wasn't it's a bit of sticky keratin wax it's like caramel on the ear i'm just going to hover over it see if we can suction it so again the zoom function would be quite useful here so we're really zoomed in um, it just looks as though i've got the endoscope deeper in the ear but i haven't the endoscope is still near the entrance of the ear so again, the zoom function can be beneficial in that way. If some specialists are a bit um, cautious about putting um, inserting the endoscope too deep, with the zoom function, you don't have to. Um, the, the endoscope's literally near the entrance um, of the ear, and you can view deeper into the ear without in further inserting the endoscope. So that's another useful uh, a, a benefit. So just zooming back out. So same patient, just with their right ear. I've just gone back to the standard view. Um, because this wax is near the entrance, you don't need to zoom at the moment. And this is a lot drier and firmer. So this is the ear that they haven't been using any drops. I'm just trying to lift it off the floor of the ear canal and you can see all those skin adhesions. So that skin is not only enveloped and attached itself to this wax and skin plug, but it's also still adhered to the ear canal wall. So that skin was formerly lining the ear canal wall. Um, and since that skin has died and it's shedded and it's replaced by another layer of skin underneath it which has pushed it off the surface and that skin would normally come out the ear by itself the ear cleanses itself it um, extracts the dead skin it allows the dead skin to migrate out of the ear so it's a self-cleansing mechanism but uh, that skin in this instance has attached itself to this white plug and it's actually formed of it so a lot of this wax plug is also made up of dead skin and that's layers of skin that was originally on the canal wall so I'm just trying to tease this through. Uh, because it was quite a, a dry piece, it was rough on the surface. So as we're pulling it through, the patient can slightly feel it. And that's why I put some oil in just to try to soften the surface. Now there's a, a gap at the top of the, the wax plug. So I'm just, because you may have noticed again, this patient's ear canal is very, very narrow. So I have to stretch the ear open with the endoscope so I can get the ear hook even into the ear and this is where the wax scope will probably be quite good for um, some specialists you don't have to use the endoscope to stretch the ear you use the wax scope the speculum that we use so i'm just zooming in and out um it did throw me at first because um, obviously when we see the eardrum as close as this with an endoscope it normally my brain's wide and because i'm using the endoscope it's wired to, to make me think i'm putting the endoscope into the ear but the endoscope's not in the ear, so I was, I was a bit cautious. Every time I zoomed in, I was thinking, oh, God, I've got the endoscope too deep in the ear. And, and I partly came away with the endoscope. Um, and it's just my brain has to rewire itself um, to realise, to, to tell, to reassure myself that I'm not putting the endoscope further in. All I'm doing is zooming in. And that, again, I'm just zooming in there. You can see, we can see the top part, the hammer bone, probably over zoomed in there. And just zoom back out. So on the right-hand side of the ear canal, again, the patient's got this protrusion of the bony part of the ear. There's a bit of crusted dead skin just at the bottom of the ear canal. And I think this is where the zoom would be good with the, with the endoscope. It really can 
look at some of this fine detail. We're working against the canal wall. It's just slightly better because there's a few hairs there. Just peeling that away. So we're just going to re-examine the ear. Well, I hope you enjoyed that video, guys. Take care, keep well, and speak soon. Bye.